In a finding that has huge implications on the reopening of schools, a study from the University College of London has found that children and te teenagers have half the risk of getting coronavirus disease as compared to adults. Now the study provided no information on the infectivity of children, so we don't, still don't know how easily they spread infection to others. But it did find that children are 56% less likely than adults to get infected with coronavirus disease. Now the study, which like I said was done by the University College of uh, London, reviewed 6,327 studies, preprints and reports on infection in children uh, related to coronavirus disease. And what they uh, did was they were trying to understand the role of children in spreading disease. And some of the factors that actually play a role in children spreading disease are uh, the, their, of course, susceptibility to infection, the severity of sy symptoms, the viral load uh, that children carry, the social contact patterns and risk behaviors. So most people do know that for children to stay socially isolated, to wear masks, to wash their hands frequently, these are behaviors that cannot really be expected from children without uh, supervision. So what they did find that was that children again were more likely to be asymptomatic and have milder symptoms, which is a finding again which confirms earlier findings that show that children are more likely to get milder forms of coronavirus diseases compared to adults. So what we do know is that children often get very mild disease and very often they don't get symptoms at all so they may recover without people even realizing that they were ill and infected with coronavirus disease. But uh, whether they get infected at all, again the data we have is very conflicting. So large studies from countries like Iceland, Netherlands, uh, Spain and Italy have shown that the prevalence of coronavirus disease in young children and young adults is much lower than uh, other adults than the average population but again studies from Sweden, England, Switzerland and Germany show that the prevalence is almost the same. So what uh, Sweden, uh, England, Switzerland and Germany found that children do get infected it's just that they don't get hospitalized so or they don't fall severely ill so we don't even realize that they're ill. So uh, Sweden which did not close down its uh, daycare centers, uh, schools and didn't make any major adjustments to class size lunch policies or breaks found that the antibody prevalence, now antibodies uh, are, are uh, produced by, by the body by our immune system to fight infection so it's a very good indicator of past infection. So and it's often used as a tool to find out whether a population has been infected with a particular disease or not. So Sweden did this antibody prevalence studies and found that 4.7% uh, antibody prevalence in children compared to 6.7% in adults aged 20 to 64 and 2.7% in 65 to 70 year olds who uh, again were not stepping out and were more protected and not as mobile as the younger population. So if you really look at the difference, antibody prevalence in children was 4.7 and in adults it was 6.7 so there wasn't much of a dif difference. So, which is why a lot of countries now are actually looking at opening schools because they feel a lot of them have already started, uh, have opened school and children were back to school this week. Uh, but uh, also uh, because they said that long lasting school closures not only lead to a loss in learning, but it also has a detrimental effect on uh, social skills that children have and other development indices. So what people said, you really have to look at the harm and the potential of them getting infected and not getting serious disease uh, versus uh, the other losses that they're facing in terms of losing friendships, losing development, losing physical activity as well as learning. But is it okay for us to open schools in India? That's a question all of us are asking. Most schools in India have been shut since the Prime Minister announced the lockdown in March. But some schools have of course resumed classes online uh, and children are uh, logging in every day for e-learning. But should we actually shut schools? Because in schools, you don't. it's not just book learning that children are exposed to. Uh, school also provides a very structured setting in, in, uh, in which children develop social competencies like self-confidence, friendships, empathy, uh, social responsibility. So there's a lot of social and emotional learning that also happens. Uh, uh, so which e-learning alone cannot uh, uh, be relied on to, uh, to impart to children. And then again we must consider the socially and economically disadvantaged children who go to schools not just for an education but also for nutrition which they get through their midday meals which is hugely successful across India. 
as well as uh, for health services like uh, in some schools, uh, especially in rural areas, uh, classrooms are, are, are places where children get uh, vaccinated against diseases or, or they get their uh, uh, iron tablets and other uh, uh, supplements to prevent them from deficiencies. So should can we rely on e-learning alone? And of course, e-learning has a huge role to play, but all kids, like I said before, do not have access to online learning. So the learnings may be uneven for them. So what some experts are suggesting is that now India should also rely on television, on radio, uh, for uh, to reach out to children who do not have access to computers and smartphones. And again, look at uh, ways and opportunities in which we can get kids back to school, which you know could be adjustments in class size, change in lunch policies, staggering recess, uh, may perhaps getting kids uh, to come to school 15 days a month and uh, uh, doing it on a cyclic basis. So we really need to give it thought because unlike in the West, coronavirus disease hasn't peaked in India yet. It's expected to peak in late July and in August. So uh, the chances of schools opening in July don't seem very high at the moment. Of course, things can change uh, if, if people actually stick to wearing masks and uh, stick to social isolation. But as of now, if we want schools to open, if we want kids to go back to school, we must ensure we keep uh, infections down and look for ways in which children can go back to learning as soon as possible because this uh, pandemic should not have a long term, a long lasting effect on their uh, social, emotional um, growth and development.